Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 31. The EV market share is still rising. Tesla's sale is up 457% year over year in Germany. Tesla might raise as much as $5 billion in capital. And Elon teases with radical change in core technology of building their cars. Yes, you're gonna want the made in German Model Y. All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Before we get started, I just want to make a quick shout out to my new Patreons. Harry Oliveri, Lance, Franz Lau, Nick Cott, Fleming Scopia, John Dibble, James Jackson, Ryan Virgil, Carlos Estrella, William Miller, Alexander T. Nilsson, John Avenson, David Jepson, Timothy Triplett, David and Sarah DiGaldo, Giangalo Sanolini, David May, David Pett, Joseph Greenwood, and Who Why? <laughs> and a big thanks to Stefan Druin. Thank you so much for all your support, and I am now only seven patrons away from my first goal. Thank you so much, guys. And let's get into the news. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. <laughs> Tesla may dilute the share a bit, and S&P 500 is playing hard to get. First, the S&P did tweet about how well Tesla is doing, and I thought this was kind of a clue of them getting ready to include them in the index fund. But then on Friday, we hear they have included three other companies, but not Tesla. Three companies that combined are still worth nine times less than Tesla. I am by no means an expert in S&P 500 index, but if this index fund should be representative of the US stock market, I would think that Tesla should be included. It generates tens of billions in revenue per year, has been profitable in four quarters in a row, and is worth over $300 billion. And the Tesla stock has been doing better than the S&P 500, so it should strengthen the index to include Tesla. So, for them not to enclose Tesla, hmm, smells a bit fishy to me. But we will have to wait and see what will happen, and if you are a long-term investor, this really does not matter. But Tesla has also made interesting announcement, because they just announced that Tesla will potentially make $5 billion capital raise. They have not done this yet, but they will get the ability to sell shares to the market and get the money for that. Something I did say they would do, but got a lot of hate because Tesla would never make another secondary share offering because that would dilute the stock. Yes, but that is exactly what Tesla is preparing to do. This will not dilute the stock much with this high price it is at right now, and if they are only going to raise $5 billion, it will not dilute the stock more than a bit over 1%, depending on when they will do it, of course. I think it's a very good idea, because if the S&P 500 at some point will include Tesla and only buy the stocks from the floater stocks, they will buy up about 20% of the stocks available, and that will make the stock price skyrocket. And it will not be a bad idea, in my opinion, to dilute the stock at least a little bit, so the stock price will rise more smoothly. And Tesla will get billions of dollars in the bank, and can maybe use some of these billions to make Tesla grow even faster, building more factories and so on. Because I don't think Tesla need to raise capital, so I do believe they're doing this to grow faster and invest in new technologies and machines and so on. And I do believe after battery day the stock will rise. And I do believe after battery day the stock will rise and after we see the result of Q3 that is looking to be a strong quarter, it will rise even more. So still believe it's a good idea for Tesla to make this secondary share offering to dilute the stock a bit because it will rise many times more over the next couple of years. It will probably even rise a good deal within this year with all the good things that are coming. 
But now we just have to wait and see if S&P will ever make Tesla included in the index. And if so, will they just buy the stock from the floater stocks or are they approaching Tesla to buy them directly from Tesla? As we have seen S&P 500 do in the past, so not unlikely. But time will tell what Tesla is preparing for a secondary share offering. The next year with Tesla is just going to be crazy. Can't wait to see all they're going to do. And if you have still not got it, the electric vehicles are coming, and they're coming fast. Plug-in vehicle shares in Sweden are up three times more year over year. In Sweden, they continue to grow its plug-in vehicle electric market share in August 2020, reaching 28% up from 8.7% in August 2019. It is still plug-in hybrids that are the most popular, but the three BEVs in the top 10 is of course the Tesla Model 3 ranking 3rd and the brand new Polestar 2 ranking 2nd. Very nice to see the Polestar getting a good start there and number 1 is Kia Neo. And in France the EV market is also hitting a 10.5% EV market share in August, up 4 times as much year over year. But if you want a sneak peek of what the future will look like, just take a look at Norway. In August, the plug-in vehicle market was almost 70% of the total car market. Wow! And the fully battery electric vehicles was 48.4% of the market. Just amazing, and it has happened in just a few years. This is how fast the market can adapt to EVs. Yes, they are coming faster than people think. And Germany is riding the trend as well. Tesla sales are up 457% year over year, driving an unprecedented rise in electric vehicle sales in the country. Comparing the January to August 2020 period to January to August 2019 period, Tesla is the only car brand recording sales growth with 11.2%. Just take a look at this chart. Accordingly, Tesla is the only automaker to sell more vehicles in Germany this year than in the same period last year. And this also means that Tesla took almost 18% of the electric vehicle market share in Germany in August. And as many has talked about, the Tesla sales in Europe is down in July and here comes the big boys. But I simply just don't understand how Tesla works. It is the same every year. Every quarter in Europe starts off weak because that is when Tesla is shipping cars from the US to Europe and then the sales starts picking up again in the second half of the quarter. And that is exactly what we are seeing again this year. And September sales will probably be even higher than August sales in countries like Germany. So we can expect a record sales number in Germany in Q3. And all this before Gigafactory 4 is even built. Can you imagine what will happen when Tesla can just spit them off the assembly line in Germany and straight out to customers? And the Made in Germany Model Y will be something new. The one thing we always hear the bears and haters talk about is the build quality. But as I have made a whole video about, Tesla is improving their build quality faster than anyone else, and I still believe they will have the best built cars in the world in 5 years time. And Elon also just went to the Gigafactory 4 in Berlin and he teased us with the Model Y they will make in Germany, which is going to be a radical redesign in the core technology of building the car. I already think the car I have is really nicely built, but I think we can expect Tesla to bring some real German build quality to the table with Gigafactory 4. That would be even better and more innovative than what German automakers even have today, which is already world class. It's, it's not just um, you know a copy of the, the Model Y, it's, it's actually a radical redesign of the core technology of building a car. Um, and some of this when I do Battery Day uh, later in September, I'll talk about what we're going to be doing here in Berlin, but it'll be the first time that there's going to be a trans transformation in the uh, core structural design of the vehicle. Uh, it's quite, it's quite, quite a big thing. Is it just me that can't wait any longer for Battery Day? Come on already! And while Tesla is working on the build quality, the Tesla Model 3 is rated as the most reliable car. 
motoring publication Whatcar recently conducted its annual Whatcar Reliability Survey, which reveals the best and worst vehicle in the UK market today when it comes to reliability. This year, the study included nearly 13,000 car owners who were asked about how dependent their vehicle had been over the previous 12 months. For this year, Whatcar also decided to ask owners how much they had to pay to get their vehicle problem fixed and how long the repair process took. The Tesla Model 3 was deemed as the most reliable executive car today in Britain, electric or otherwise. Only 5% of the Tesla Model 3 owners who participated in the survey reported having issues with their vehicles and even then the problem were only connected to the car's interior trim. Despite these faults, the Tesla Model 3 owner noted that the car could still be driven without any problems. Even better, the issue once reported were fixed in a day or less at zero cost. Thanks to customers' positive response to the Model 3, the vehicle earned a stellar 99.4% reliability rating from Watcar's survey, placing the vehicle ahead of all electric cars and executive vehicle regardless of what type of propulsion. In comparison, the Mercedes C-Class only scored 87.3 in reliability rating, so the Tesla Model 3 is the most reliable car you can get. And I can definitely vouch for that. I have been driving 55,000 kilometers in my Tesla Model 3 over the last 15 months, and I have done nothing to it. No service, no issues. And as I have already mentioned, Elon went to Gigafactory 4 and made some interviews. And Tobias Lin, that bring us all the drone footage of the Gigafactory 4, was there recording it all. And you have to go watch his video of this interview. It is 10 minutes long, so I don't have time to show it all here in this news episode. But you should definitely go check it out. I will leave a link in the description. But Elon did mention that Tesla will probably be building more factories in Germany for battery cells and more. So Tesla is just getting started here in Europe and will make much more than just cars. But they're just a car company. And he talked about how impressed he is with the way the companies that are building the factories are using these fabricated parts that makes it a very fast build. But it was just so nice to see Elon at the factory having fun, being happy, just amazing how much this man does without being stressed and just seems to have a good time and are not being so serious. He's just a great example for other CEOs to follow. And speaking of Tesla in Germany, they are also officially opening the first version 3 superchargers in Berlin next week. So a lot of great things are going on in Germany. And let's just take a look at the progress at Gigafactory 4. While we can see they are isolating the roof and casting building, that is almost looking like a real factory. Just so much going on and the pace is just unreal. And the Gigafactory 5 in Texas is no exception. You can now kind of make out the size of the first phase of the building. And just look at the size of this place. It is huge. Just look at these trucks driving on the side, it almost looks like a synchronized dance. Going to be so exciting to see how fast this factory will go vertical. And Elon's other company, the little tiny teeny beanie SpaceX, has also had a quite busy week. They did not launch all three rockets last Sunday, but one did take off Sunday, the Polar Orbit one that we talked about in the last news episode. Then on the 3rd of September, SpaceX launched the next Starlink rocket with another 60 satellites on board. We are getting very close to the launch of Starlink Internet. SpaceX have been making tests of the Internet and the result from these tests have shown super low latency and download speed greater than 100 megabytes per second. So the first tests are already looking promising. And then on the 4th of September, SpaceX did another jump with the Starship. This time with the SN6 also making a 150 meter jump, but this time much more controlled and smooth as Elon tweeted. Making the Starship fly doesn't seem so unreal anymore. <laughs> there are still people who want to bet against this guy. Good luck with that. And Unplugged Performance did make it to the top of Pike's Peak. 
And as we talked about last week, the Unplugged Performance team did get the Model 3 ready again after they crashed it and got to the top of Pike's Peak, but had to settle with second place because Blake Fuller from Electric Performance and Now You Know was the fastest expedition car of Pike's Peak. Expedition car means that you can do anything to the car. And Blake got the first place with his production Model 3. Yes, they did pull out most of the inside and put in a roll cage, but it is still just a production Model 3. Very impressive driving there from Blake. If you want to dive into this, go check out Zach and Jesse from Now You Know's news episode and check out Electric Performance YouTube channel that has a lot of great videos about it. So cool and congratulations to Blake and everyone involved in the project. And this solar powered luxury RV has a balcony and can charge your Tesla. It is a very cool luxury RV from the company Living Vehicle. It is not cheap, it does cost $230,000, but then you will get a very cool luxury living experience in an RV, which is powered by the sun and can charge up your Tesla. And it can charge with 44 miles per charging hour. That is not half bad, and definitely something you can't do with your ice car. You can pretty much use this as a tiny home, which will make the price a little better if not just a holiday vehicle, but an actual home. But anyway, it's a very cool idea and you should check out their video about this cool RV. I will leave a link to the video below. And Tesla's vertical power plant brings power wall batteries to 3000 homes in Australia, of course. Tesla's ambitious virtual power plant project in South Australia has entered its third phase with the initiative now aiming to add another 3,000 public housing properties to the growing solar and home battery network. With the addition of 3,000 homes, solar and power wall properties to the system, Tesla's virtual power plant could start providing grid support services that are equivalent to a fairly sized battery storage system. Phase 3 would allow the total numbers of houses involved in the project to grow to about 4,100 housing in South Australian properties across the state. Granted, this is still a small step towards Tesla's goal of creating a virtual power plant comprised of a whopping 50,000 homes. But phase 3 could bring together roughly 20 megawatt of rooftop solar energy and 54 megawatt hour of combined battery storage. Not bad, not bad at all. The project is just so exciting because this could become a very normal thing in the future, especially in places like Australia, where they do have a lot of outage. And Tesla is working on providing them with the solution with solar, batteries and the software out of better. And this could easily become a very big business for Tesla on a global scale. And the study shows that the young generation Z prefer renewables and are concerned about climate change. Morning Consult, a US-based data intelligence firm, recently conducted a climate change study on members of the Generation Z, aged between 13 and 23. In a post about the survey, the data intelligence firm noted that overall the study revealed that Generation Z accept climate change as a fact, and a significant number of them are willing to do something about it, and they do not want to go work for the coal industry, but for solar and renewables. This is just showing you what will happen in the next 10 years when the Generation Z is growing up and going to buy cars. They will not buy these polluting ice cars, but go for electric. Like I said in other videos, the auto industry is not controlling how fast the world is switching to EVs, because the public will demand it. And if you don't want to step up and meet this demand, Tesla and others will. And you will be left in the dust. And let's end off with a bit of fun. Let's take a look at Ford playing around with just how far they can take the electric car. Here you can see this beast they have made, the Mustang Cobra Jet 1400. A very powerful car. They have put over 1400 horsepowers in that is doing a little wheelie on the drag strip. And it's actually completing the quarter mile in just 8.27 seconds. Very impressive. 
And nice to see Ford working on the electric car and pushing the envelope. Hopefully they will bring some of this technology on the street one day. Hopefully with a little less power force, everyday Joes. That is all we have time for in this news episode, but before you go, don't forget to hit that like button if you liked it, it really helps out a lot. And hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future episodes just like this one. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support, and if you want to support me even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of the show and get your shout out here on this channel. All the names you see floating by right now are my amazing Patreon producers of this show. You can go to patreon.com slash Tesla and see all the perks in there and choose your level of support and get your name on this list. And thank you for watching, and until next time, take care out there and be nice.